form and function in the kinoderms. So we've looked at the phylum echinoderm model, and we've looked at the different classes of echinoderms. Um, and we're going to use a repre representative member of the echinodermata to kind of represent how all of these different types of animals carry out these seven essential functions. Um, keep in mind that this will vary a little bit from class to class, but for our purposes, we're just going to look, look at the sea star. So digestion, you are going to have um, animals in the echinodermata that will have a complete digestive system, so from mouth to anus. Um, and the special way that starfish actually eat are by surrounding a bivalve, um, to, which is their typical prey. And then they're going to use their two feet to open up and pry open that, that bivalve. And then they're going to actually take one of their two stomachs and flip that stomach inside into the prey, and which they will use to um, secrete enzymes and digest the animal, and then they're going to suck their stomach back in. Um, and then they've got a second stomach which will help to digest the food, and then they've also got digestive glands which will help to digest the food and to distribute nutrients throughout the body. Um, they're going to have two sides, the oral surface and the aboral surface. So if you are looking at a starfish on a rock, the side of the starfish that you're actually seeing is the aboral surface. That's the top of the animal, and they, that's where the anus of the animal is actually located. If you were to take that starfish off the rock and flip it over, that would be the oral surface. That's where the mouth is located. So that's actually the mouth is actually located on the bottom of the animal. Um, you do have different kinds of animals that will be different types of feeders in this phylum. You can have sea cucumbers, which will be scavengers, and sea lilies that can be filter feeders, uh, so on and so forth. All right, respiratory system. So these animals will actually use their two feet for their carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange. So they have little two feet, which you can see in this picture on the right, all on the underside of their ar five arms, or multiple of five arms. And um, those two feet are very, very thin, and so they can actually exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen across the surface of those two feet. Um, so that's going to actually serve as like their respiratory system. You do have some species that will have skin gills, so on the top of their arms, they will have these little feathery structures that will stick up and also aid in respiration or exchanging carbon dioxide and oxygen. Um, you can see on the left picture, that's the internal anatomy of a starfish. You will actually, um, for circulation and excretion, you actually don't have special systems for these two uh, functions. So the two feet and the skin gills for the animal are all over the body, and they're going to be taking care of the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. Um, and then they're also going to be removing metabolic waste. So any metabolic waste that the animal produces will be excreted through the two feet. So they don't need a special system um, because they can do all of that across the surface of their two feet. Um, and then they don't also don't need a circulatory system because their nutrients that they get from eating are going to be distributed by the digestive glands. So the digestive glands take up the majority of the space in each of the arms, um, and those digestive glands are what's going to distribute those nutrients. So these guys don't need a circulatory system in order to distribute nutrients or oxygen and carbon dioxide. So they actually don't have any blood and no heart, no any sort of um, circulatory system. Kind of cool. Their nervous system, they do not have a head. They um, actually just, ha or a brain, they just have a nerve ring that surrounds the mouth, and then they have a radial nerve which runs down each of the arms. So they, again, they have no head. They, on each of the tips of the arms, they will have what's called an eye spot, which can help them to determine light from dark. Um, and then they also have statuses, which will help them to tell what's up from down. And um, what's interesting is that, so see, there's no brain, there's no really coordination. Um, of movement or like no thinking process. So uh, actually what we've found is that um, one of the arms 
will actually take over the rest of the arms uh, if they if it detects food, and so that the starfish will start moving in that direction. Or if it detects a predator, then they'll move away. Uh, and so one of the arms will actually take over the function of the nervous system. There must be a skeletal system. So these guys don't actually have muscles. They're going to have what's called a water vascular system. And um, they're, that's going to be using the hydrostatic pressure of water in order to move. So the water vascular system consists of the ring canal, which is um, exactly what it sounds like. It's a ring uh, around the digestive system. It's going to contain radial canals, which extend down each arm. And then the two feet are a part of the uh, water vascular system. And those are suction cup-like structures connected to the radial canals. And then you're going to have the madreporite or sieve plate, which is the opening of the top of the starfish that's going to actually filter water into the ring canal and radial canal and two feet. So what's going to happen is uh, the madreporite will let water in, ring and radial canals will distribute the water, and then um, you will have muscles that surround it ampullae on the tube feet, and then those can contract and move water into the tube feet, which would extend the tube foot. And then when they relax, they allow the water to come back up into the ampullae, and the tube foot will retract. So they're able to move by using this hydrostatic pressure of water and squeezing water into different parts of this water vascular system in order to allow for um, the movement of the tube feet and therefore the overall movement of the starfish. They do have an endoskeleton to help them keep their structure as well. It's an endoskeleton, and it's composed of, the pr of protective plates made of calcium carbonate, and it's mostly for protection. It's not involved in movement at all. That's the, that's the water vascular system. Um, but it is for protection. It's what gives the animals the, um, the hard or crunchy feel. Um, okay. Reproductive system, they tend to have separate sexes, so um, they'll have male and female sea stars, and they will use broadcast reproduction. So they will, the, the males will release sperm into the water, the females will release eggs, and fertilization will occur outside of the animal's body in the water column, external fertilization, and then that will form a little larva which will eventually grow up and become an adult starfish. So they can do sexual reproduction through broadcast spawning, or they can do a form of asexual reproduction called regeneration, where animals can actually regrow lost body parts. So these starfish, if they lose an arm, they can actually regrow that arm. And actually, some types of starfish, if they have um, part of the central disc attached to their arm when they lose that arm, that arm can actually grow into a whole new animal. Ecology of sea stars are echinoderms. Um, you're going to have sea stars that will control many different populations. So they're actually very important predators and in many um, types of ecosystems they can be top predators. Uh, sea urchins will help to control algae populations. And then both sea stars and sea urchins have been known to upset the ecology of an area. So if you get too many of them, they can actually cause bad things to happen. We also have found that sea urchins are really, really good to be used in embryological research because they have very large eggs that are easy to see and, and uh, it's much easier to watch a sea urchin develop than it is a little baby, a human baby. We're also using um, these animals in drug research for antiviral and anti-cancer drugs to try and see, because they can regrow arms and stuff like that. So we're doing a lot of research into their um, uses for us. And then you can also eat certain types of echinoderms. So you can eat sea urchin eggs or um, the gonads of sea urchins. And then you can also eat sea cucumber. Sea cucumber is actually considered to be a delicacy in many areas. And then this is just your general anatomy of a sea star, so you can see what the inside of a sea star looks like. <laughs>